Hello everyone, welcome back to Nails by Sora. This is Stephanie and today I'm going to be doing yet another challenge from Blue Rose Nails. And I love these challenges because every so often, and actually it happens more often than not, when I want to do something but I don't know what I want to do, um, I can draw upon these challenges to give me some ideas and some focus. So I apologize if there's, I'm just gonna wait. I apologize if there's a lot of ambient background noise. Um, I am sitting with my window open because I will be working with acrylic and monomer. And I'm going to be doing a marbling effect. I kind of want to use this color, um, not really effect, uh, technique. Um, I kind of want to use this color by iGel Beauty. It's uh, their dip and dap line of acrylic powder. It can be used for both acrylic applications or dip powder applications, but it's got this great holographic uh, glitter in it. So I want to try to work that into the marble. Um, I'll do it on one nail, see how it turns out, and then I may work it into some others. But I'm also going to be using this purple color by um, iGel Beauty, this beautiful blue that I got from the, uh, from the local uh, nail supply uh, store by me. Uh, it's by Not Polish. And then also this, uh, what is it called? A uh, cover rosebud from Young Nails. So those are the main colors I'm going to be using. And then I'm going to be threading some gold through it. Um, I did use my, or prepare rather, my long coffin nails, extra long coffin nails. But the challenge specifies a long round or oval, which I don't have. So I did round out the tips. I may bring them back to a coffin afterwards. I'm not really sure if I like the way I shaped them. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, at this point though, I'd like to invite you to please like and subscribe. You can of course wait until the end to like it, but I would appreciate it if you, you're here and you've been here multiple times and you haven't yet subscribed, if you would do so. It doesn't cost you any money. Just hit, hit, hit that, hit it. Hit that subscribe button, do it, do, do it now. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna get right into it. I'm going to start off with my Vita Prime by Light Elegance just to get the nails ready. They are, or this primer is for acrylic nails. So I'm going to get that going. And then, and it's not really sticking to the nail. Well, that's a hair right there. Um, I wonder if I would have had to buff it first. Ay, 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 ay. It says for acrylic extensions, but it's okay. I'm gonna set this aside. I'm going to pop this one off and attach it to my solo stand so I can work a little bit better. And we're just going to do a, I guess a one, two, three, four action where I'm gonna pick up a little bit of each color with my brush. I am using a number eight Kalinske brush. This one is from um, hold on a second. Let me mute my notifications. Um, is it going to unlock? Uh, this one is from, I can't remember the name of the company right now. I will link all the information for the products that I use in the description box below. So don't worry, you will have all of that information. And I'm just going to pull it down and I'm going to knock off that bristle that's coming loose. I'm gonna start off with a mixture of all four colors. And I'm gonna to try to work rather quickly kind of just place the colors where I want them. 
and then coax them together. And here comes the thunder again. So unusual. So now I'm just patting it down and trying to marble the colors together. Making sure to wipe off my brush in between and re-wet it with monomer. Now make sure if you do use acrylic that, and I'm not, as I say it, my mask is down around my chin. Make sure you're wearing a mask and you're sitting in a well-ventilated area because monomer is quite smelly and you don't want to be breathing it in too much. It's funny when I think back on how nervous I was when I first started using acrylic to, you know, take a wet brush and dip it into powder. And comparing that, or back then to right now, when it's just second nature. And yeah, I don't always pick up the uh, perfect bead. I don't think anybody ever does uh, consistently pick up the perfect bead. But the more you do it, the more comfortable you become with it. And the process just becomes second nature. All right, I'm gonna let that sit. It is a little uneven, but I want it to set up a little bit before I go in with clear to cover. And I'll move on to the next nail and I will probably limit it to maybe these three colors to see what happens. I did happen to get some glitter in this one. So I'm going to try to pick it up and get it out of there with my next couple of beads. I think since I have a little bit glitter on there, I'm going to add a little bit more just so that it doesn't look unintentional. All right, moving on to the last nail. I think I'm going to leave the dark blue out and just work with these three.
Alrighty. So here we've got our three nails. So first one, second one, third one. I'm going to go back over the first one with clear, but first I want to clean up all of this so that it doesn't accidentally get knocked over or contaminated. I'm going to get my speed clear. You want to make sure you look at it from all angles so that you can see where you need to add some more to even it out. And the goal here is just to get a smooth surface, get it all filled in around the different colors and applications so that when you go into file and reshape, you don't lose any of the design. Same principle as when you're doing dip or when you're doing gel, you just want to make sure that you encapsulate the design really well so that you can go back in and file and reshape the nail without losing all of your work. Just want to put a really small bead in the center of the nail by the apex. You can let it settle a little before you work with it. Let some of that monomer evaporate. All right, on to nail two. Now, a lot of nail artists, what they do is they start their first bead around the apex, but I like starting it at the top of the nail and really pushing it up into the cuticle. I just feel like I get a better application that way. But you do you, boo. Find a technique that works for you, perfect it, and make it yours. If you can't get it off the brush, your bead is too dry. All right, so now I'm gonna get cleaned up. I'm going to let that dry and set up, and then I'm going to get into the filing. Thank you. 
Yeah. All right. So knocking things all over the place. I'm just trying to clean up the dust from on the nails. And then I'm just going to wipe it down with a lot of a little bit of isopropyl alcohol just to get off any remaining dust so that we can go ahead with the rest of the design. I do have these beautiful butterfly gems that I just got and I'm considering using one of the blue ones. I don't want it to be random though, so I'm going to look at it and see inside if it really belongs. And then we will decide maybe together. Although technically I'll decide and you'll find out after the fact, but. So I did go in with my e-file as you saw, and then I went in with my hand file, which I'm still doing a little bit of cleanup. I have a little bit of unevenness in the shaping. So I just want to finish that off. I do prefer to use the e-file just because it's easier to do it on these stands. It knocks it around a little bit less than a hand file does. And usually when I use a hand file, I end up uh, with the nails flying all over the place. So I tend to stick to the e-file for that. And now we're just going to go in with some liner gel. This is by Dipalicious. And I think I'm going to decant some onto my palette and use my liner brush because I find that to be a little bit easier. Um, which liner brush do I want to use? That is the question. I think I will use my medium length one. I'm just gonna put some gold here. I do generally use my Madame Glam gold gel paint, but I don't know. I, I want to find someone that's really something like that's really like a chrome uh, gel paint. Uh, I have it in silver, but I can't seem to find it anywhere in gold. So I may have to take a gander at that. How do I want this to go? Is this even going to show up? I think I may need to use the Madame Glam one because this one's not really that pigmented. All right, change of plans. Disappointing. Ah. Come hither. Turn on my lamp and cook this for 60 seconds and move on to the next nail. So these are the three nails so far. Obviously they are not finished yet. This one was the second one, this one was the third one. Although I kind of want, since this one doesn't have any blue in it, I kind of want it bookended by the other ones. I was going to maybe put the butterfly here in that little nook, but I'd like it center mass. And I have both green and blue ones, but I, obviously we've got a blue theme going over on here and no green. So I was thinking of maybe using it on the center. 
So I'm gonna try to lay out a design and see if it makes sense. Mm, I keep wanting to use these because of their, you know, their holographic nature, if, if you can call that holographic or reflective, but I don't think, I think it would add too much. So maybe just some silver and then some caviar beads. Although the facets, the border on the gem is gold. Um, what to do, what to do? Um, part of the challenge was to use chrome, gold chrome. I was going to leave it out, but I think maybe I'll add in some chrome flake accents. Should we do that? So you need top coat. This is white top coat. I need no white top. top coat. All right, I'll use this one. So I'm just going to paint it into the areas that I want to add the chrome flakes. And for that, I'm going to use my little baby blender. So let's start from left to right. Let's put some in here. So I'm gonna cure that for 10 seconds. And then I'm going to rub some of the chrome flakes in. This is Amanda from Magpie Beauty. And I am very excited. I mentioned in my last video that I'm going to be starting classes in November to become a certified nail tech. Or at least that's the plan as of right now. And Magpie Beauty has quite a few products that they only sell to licensed nail techs. So it'll be very nice to be able to purchase whatever products I want. Because right now there's so many products, probably better for my wallet. Um, but there's so many products that I want that I can't get because I don't have a license number. Dust that off. Do I want to go in anywhere? I always forget about my silicone pens. Do a full cure on that and then we'll move on to the next one. So for this one, I'm going to try dusting it on and then I'll use the silicone tool to burnish it. Horrified, horrified. And this is why we cover things when we're not using them. Can I scoop that up? Not really. I just cleaned. Okay, break. We're back with our regularly scheduled programming and I will save the cleanup from when I'm done. For right now, I just put some paper towel over it and we're gonna go on with the third nail and hopefully not knock anything over again.
Okay, so back to our gems. I'm gonna clean off my palette so I can use it as a better background for this video. Video kill the radio star. All right, we're gonna go with it and see what happens. I'm just gonna play around and add things in as I feel like it. And to do so, I'm going to be using my gem glue, well, rhinestone glue from McCart. And I'm going to cure the butterfly in place first. Do a little flashy flash. And into the lamp. Into the lamp. Alrighty. Uh, here it is. I was going to say I'm missing one, but here it is. If I can pick it up, pick it, pick it, pick it, pick it, pick it up. Stay. Okay, fine, fine, fine. I was contemplating doing another line of gems coming down from each bottom um, wing, but I think I'm just going to lay in some caviar beads in between the rhinestones. So I'm going to get my very, very tiny, tiny, tiny caviar beads. And I'm going to lay down some rhinestone glue. And then I'm just going to pick up a bunch of them and lay them in there.
So I will accept that there's something wrong with me because this is one of the parts that I absolutely love about nail art. It's just very precise work of lining up miniature caviar beads that would drive other people insane. But I really, really, really like it. Judge me as you will. All right, I'm going to put that into cure. I'm going to do the other side. I am not going to make you watch me and I will come back to finish off this set of nails. All right, I am all for this. Look at the shine and the glimmer and the shimmer. I am all about it. This is, I, I, I can't get over it. But time to finish this off with a uh, base coat and a top coat. I wanna go in with a base coat first just to make sure to even out any bumps and lumps that there might be. So I'm going to put on a healthy base on all of the nails. Also because I did um, the chroming effect, I want a tacky layer um, to, for the top coat to adhere to. That will help prolong the manicure, especially if you're doing it on a real life person. Um, anytime you do a chroming effect or anything where you have to do it on top of a top coat and then top over it again, you wanna make sure that you put a tacky layer on first and then go back in with your top coat. All right, that's that one. I'm gonna skip over to this one next. You wanna make sure if you're going over a chromed area that you don't drag the brush over it. You wanna just lightly float the gel. The chrome um, can come back off if you're not careful. Same with pigment powders or anything that is not really embedded into the nail. So uh, tread a little bit lightly until you get that base coat all over the nail and cured. And my hand just went into the other nail. Um, and then you can, you know, apply your top coat as usual. And I'm gonna put a little bit more over the apex cause there seems to be a little bit of a dip. And then I'm going to get these cured and I'll move on to the jeweled nail. Now, when you're top coating around jewels, you wanna make sure you go, or rather base coating in this instance, you wanna make sure that you go around the jewels. You can, generally speaking, you can go over caviar beads, but you don't wanna go over anything that has a facet because then you're going to dull the shine. The light just won't reflect off of it the same way. But you do wanna make sure that you push the gel up against all of the gems so that they're really well encapsulated. That will help keep them on longer. And 
and it'll also help cover up any gem glue that might be sticking out. All right. Into the lamp. And now to finish these off with a top coat. And I don't have any more of my No White Madam Glam, so I'm just going to finish off with Light Elegance. So I'm gonna go over with a nice, healthy shine. All right, guys, I am over the moon with these. I am a little less over the moon with the Light Elegance Top Coat. I actually went over it again with Madame Glam top coat, and then I had to wipe it because it was unfortunately a tacky uh, top coat. But gotta get that shine to show off these gems and jewels and that sparkle and the glitter and the veining and the marbling. I love this set. I'm so happy with it. I wish I had it on my nails right now. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a like and a subscribe. And if you made it this far, put a butterfly emoji in the comment section so I know that you've gotten this far. Um, all the information for the products I use will be in the description box. If you have any comments or questions, please put them down in the description box below. And I will see you soon in the next video.